Hi, and welcome to this tutorial of BandLab Sampler. Today we're going to focus on BandLab's mobile app, so let's dive in. To get to the sampler, open the app and hit the plus button. Choose Sampler from the carousel, which will create a new mixed editor track with an empty sampler kit ready to go. You'll notice that it has a familiar layout with 16 pads in a 4x4 grid. We'll start by recording into one of the pads. I'm going to record some sounds around my kitchen. To record, simply touch and hold a pad, and let go of the pad when you're done recording. Another way to get sounds into your pads is to import them from BandLab's vast library of royalty-free sounds. From edit mode, touch an empty pad and then the browse button on the bottom right side of the screen. From there, you can browse search and filter sounds by instrument, genre, mood, and key, just like with BandLab's mix editor and sound page. When you've found the sound you want, simply select it to load it into the pad. A final way to load sounds into a pad is to import audio or video directly from your phone. From edit mode and a blank pad selected, choose the import audio or video button on the bottom left side of the screen. From here, you'll be able to import audio from your phone's music library, miscellaneous sources like voice memos, and videos from your photo library. Before we go any further, I'm going to show you how to save the sampler kit that we've made so far. We do this by hitting the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen, touch save as, and enter the name of the kit, and touch save. Now I'll show you how to load a kit. In addition to the ability to create your own kits, BandLab has created a great library of pre-made sample kits to help jumpstart your creative ideas. To access these kits from the main screen, hit the library icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. This will bring up a library of curated sample kits. Just as with BandLab's sound page and mix editor, you can browse or search kits by keyword or filter them by genre. You can also find your custom kits in the same menu. From the main screen, touch the library icon in the bottom left corner, then My Kits at the top, and then choose the kit name from the list. Let's edit some pads. If you're not already in edit mode, hit the pencil icon and then touch the pad you want to edit. The first thing you'll probably notice now are the newly visible controls in the pad properties, which appear when a sample is loaded into a pad. These include volume, pitch, and pan. If you want to edit the sample within the pad, click the edit button in the bottom right corner. Now we see more ways to customize the sound of our sample. Let me show you some of the ways to use these controls. By default, the sampler does a good job of moving the start time of the sample selection to the first transient of the sample. But sometimes you want to move it around or try a different part of the sample. I'll show you with this belt buckle sample, which I'm going to use as a hi-hat sound. I'm also going to move the tone slider towards the treble side, which will apply a high-pass filter to the sound. If you move it to the left, it'll apply a low-pass filter. I'm also going to change the trigger type to a one-shot, which means it'll play the sample all the way to the end of the selection whenever it's triggered, unless it's part of a mute group, which I'm going to add it to now. You'll see in a second, but I'm going to add another sample to the same group to create a hi-hat group. Then when I trigger one of those pads, if the other pad in the group is playing, it'll stop playing. This is often used to create more natural sounding performances. While I'm at it, I'm also going to change the pad color to orange. The other trigger settings are gate and loop. Gate will play the sample until you take your finger off the pad. Loop will do the same thing, but if you hold it down until the end, it'll start playing from the beginning again, continuing to play until you take your finger off. I'll click the done button to exit the sample editor for the belt sample and enter the pad for this carabiner sample to make some similar edits to our second hi-hat sound. I'm going to add this sample to the same mute group as the belt buckle sample and also change its color to orange. I'm going to normalize the clip to bring up the baseline volume and make similar edits to the tone and trigger settings. Next, I'm going to edit my big snare, which I recorded with a soup ladle and a plastic water bottle. The first hit is a little noisy, so let's move the start time to the second transient. That sounds better. 
I'm going to leave it in gate mode so I can do a stutter effect if I want to, because it's starting to sound like a big 80s drum kit to me. Other than that, I'm going to move the tone a little bit to the right to filter out some of the low end. Next, I'll edit this light switch sample, which is sounding like an 80s rim shot to me. I'll move the end point, change it to a one shot, and lower the tone a little bit to give it a slightly deeper sound. So I've got a funny story on how I got this great kick sound. Believe it or not, one of my attempts to record the carabiner resulted in this deep kick drum sound. I'm not really sure how that happened. Maybe it was too close to the mic or I bumped the phone against the counter. In any case, I think that's what's called a happy accident. So I'm going to leave it alone other than to move the release out just a hair so the shorter hits have a smoother tail. Next, I'm going to edit the audio I imported from my music library. This is a track I produced called Safety in Numbers. Obviously, I don't want to sample the entire song, but I want to grab one of the exposed piano chords at the beginning of the song. First, I move the end point of the sample selector and hit the crop button so I can more easily focus in on the one chord I want to sample. Once I've got my sample start and end point selected, I'm going to slow the attack and release down just a hair to give it a more smooth feel. I'm also going to move the tone slider to the left to give it a darker vibe. So I thought this ocean sound I imported from my voice memos would sound cool pitched down and reversed, but it didn't really add the vibe I was hoping for. By the way, since we're here, here's another cool feature. If you want to return any of these knobs to the default position, just double tap the knob. So to delete this pad from edit mode, just make sure it's selected, then hit the delete button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Now it's time to play with that singing dog sample. I'm going to adjust the start time and smooth the attack and release by increasing both of their values and pull the tone slider to the left to filter out some of the noise in the high end. In fact, while I'm at it, maybe this dog singing would sound good backwards. Let's find out. I just touch the reverse button, and now the sample will play in reverse. Finally, before I lay down my beat, I'm going to edit this bass sample I imported from BandLab Sample Library. First, I'm going to crop it down so I can make a more accurate edit of just one note. Once I've set the start and end point of my sample, I'm going to lengthen the release time just a bit to give it a more natural tail. Next, I'm going to use the same sample to create a second bass note. To do this, I exit out of this pad and copy the sample to another pad by touching it, holding it, and dragging it over. With the second pad, now I can pitch the sample to a different note. Now I've got two bass notes to play with, and I'm ready to record my beat. Exit edit mode by hitting the check mark in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I've already selected my loop selection and set my BPM and count in preference in the settings menu. So I'm ready to record my beat. In the interest of time while I was screen capturing the making of this beat, I went ahead and further edited some of these pads, color coded them, moved them around. So don't be surprised when you see that suddenly happen right now. That was pretty good, but I want to quantize my MIDI performance. And to do that, I need to enter the MIDI editor. So I hit the multi-track icon in the bottom right corner. Select all the notes by long tapping a blank space in the timeline and click the select all icon. Now I can tap one of the notes to pull up the contextual menu. I hit the Q button for quantize and choose the 16th note resolution, which should do the trick. I think now would be a good time to save my kit again, and the project for that matter.
It's also worth noting that like all tracks in BandLab's mix editor, you can apply effects. So in Sampler's perform mode, you can see the effects button in the bottom center of the screen, which gives you access to presets or custom effects settings. From here, I looped out my MIDI sequence and opened up more of BandLab's curated sampler kits, loops, and instruments to see where this track wanted to take me. Here's the track that started with some kitchen sounds and a singing dog video. That's it for now. If you want to fork your own version of this track, we'll put a link in the video description. And if you found this tutorial useful, please hit the like and subscribe button and that notification bell to be the first to know when new videos drop. See you next time.